Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear respected viewers, brothers and sisters, welcome to another episode of our series, Touching Minds, a program where we aim to touch the heart and minds of our viewers with topics that are engaging, practical and relevant for their life. Today's topic is a very important topic, the fear of Allah. How can we develop it? What are the virtues of it? What can we do to make sure that we have this quality? With me are two of my students from Peace Home Learning Center. I let them introduce themselves. On my right, I have? Muhammad Hamzali. MashaAllah. And on my left? I have uh, Nibras. Nibras. Alhamdulillah. Let me start off with Nibras. Nibras, can you tell us why should we fear Allah? So we should fear Allah as He is the most merciful and He is the most greatest. So say if we do something haram, we commit a haram sin, He will go ang He will become angry and His punishments are severe. Yeah, that's true. So we should fear Allah because He will get angry if we do something wrong. And when someone uh, becomes angry, then we are scared of what will happen. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is anger is very severe. So we should be scared of the consequences of doing something that Allah does not like. And Nibras, can you mention to us what kind of things will help us develop the fear of Allah? So if we think of the Akhirah and the Day of Judgment, yep. it brings a fear in our, um, in our um, like mind, in our heart. Yeah, because some of the things that will happen in the Akhirah are very scary and we wouldn't want to face that. And so it should uh, make us stay away from anything that would uh, lead us to uh, have bad things happen to us on the Day of Judgment. Yeah. Yep. And what else? And um, what else? So if we prostrate and if we keep asking for forgiveness to Allah, He, should, um, he would help us and guide us. Yeah, very good. Hamza, can you tell us the difference between fearing Allah and fearing other things? Um, well, the difference between fearing Allah I think other things, yeah. physically, if we fear something like a dangerous animal, we run away from yeah, it. Yeah. But if we fear Allah, we run, away, we run to it because we all know that there's no running from Allah, but to Allah. And if we're fearful of Allah, we'll prostrate and ask for forgiveness. That's a very good point. Allah says in the Quran, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى Allah, Flee to Allah. Normally, when we are scared of someone or something, we would run away from them. But with Allah, that fear of Allah, makes us want to come close to him because by coming close to him we become safe uh, nibras can you uh, tell us uh, you know some people they're scared of snakes of of uh, spiders uh, they're scared at night uh, is that okay are they sinful for that no because this is a natural habit however they should ultimately be it fear allah um, the one and yep. only here yeah. uh, very good so uh, some of these feelings we may have, they're natural and uh, Allah, you know, uh, allowed us to have these feelings. Although Allah is in control of these things. Allah is the one who created the spiders and the snakes. Yeah? And nothing can harm without, uh, you know, Allah's permission. So uh, if we are scared of spiders, it doesn't mean that we're sinful. Uh, uh, but uh, the ultimately we should only fear Allah because He is the most powerful. Uh, Hamza, can you uh, mention uh, what happens if people do not fear Allah? Um, if a person d does not fear Allah, um, they'll, um, find a person will find the order of Allah difficult. Meaning, if one is not scared of Allah, yeah. um, they will start to miss Allah and yeah. um, do things that will not benefit him. Yeah. Also, um, one will forget about his he hereafter. So if he's not fearful of Allah, he will forget that. He'll forget about after after life, as if he's forgotten about the whole ocean, yep. and he's focusing on one drop of water, and also um, people won't um, be able to control their eyes or their anger. So um, if one's not fearful of Allah, if he's angry, he'll outburst. He won't be able to keep it in or keep his anger. And thus, if one person is um, not fearful of Allah, he will start to look at um, inappropriate stuff, inappropriate things. He's not allowed to. So look at. the fear of Allah is like a barrier. It's an impediment from us doing anything uh, wrong. Uh, very good point. Uh, Nibras, uh, why, do you, why do some people not fear Allah? What could be the reason why some people do not fear Allah? The reason why some people may not fear Allah is due to the fact that 
we cannot see Allah physically. So if they don't see him physically, they may not want, they may not fear him. Yeah. That shows that Iman is weak. But Allah did mention uh, about fearing him, even though we cannot see him. What, what happens to those people? Those people, they, they will get the forgiveness of Allah and yeah. they will get a huge reward. Allah says yeah. in Surah Mulk, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ بِالْغَيْبِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَأَجْرٌ كَبِيرٌ Those who fear Allah, although they haven't seen Him, they will be forgiven by Allah, they will get the forgiveness of Allah, and for them will be a great reward. Yeah. And what other reasons uh, could be, uh, there, what other reasons are there for people not fearing Allah? The state um, of their Iman. If their Iman, if their belief in Allah is, is low, if the attachment to Allah is low, so a person should try and keep connected with scholars, keep connected with the masjid, keep connected uh, with the Qur'an, and inshallah, that would help him uh, fear Allah. Um, Hamza, what kind of things, when we uh, learn about Allah, should make us fear him? Um, well, when we learn about Allah, we should learn about um, what we should fear. We should fear about one day returning to him, we should reflect on our actions, we have what we have done and what he really asks us on the Day of Judgment, we should fear death because death will happen to all of us yeah. and all of us, we're not, we're not like, we don't have as much time yeah. to live. All of us are going to die one day. Yeah. So we should be fearful about the hereafter, when we die, what's going to happen, what's going to happen to us, what's going to happen to our families, yeah. what's going to happen to our friends, um, yeah. what's, um, what's, what like, what's going to happen on the Day of Judgment, yeah. all these things. True. So we fear Allah and Allah also mentions that we should fear uh, uh, you know, the day of judgment, uh, fear the day that you'll return back to Allah. So these things, we, if we learn about them in the Quran and the descriptions that Allah gives about these things, it would make us fear Him. Uh, Nibras, is there any hadith uh, that you know about fearing Allah? Um, there, is a ayah, there is a specific ayah about um, fearing Allah and it is Fear Allah the most, for He is the most greatest and most merciful. Yeah, def definitely. And uh, you have a story or a hadith to mention about fearing Allah? Yes. So there was once a boy, a pious boy, uh, during the time of Umar ibn Khattab. Rajallahu. This boy was so pious and religious that even Umar ibn Khattab rajallahu, looked up to him. So after Esha prayer, he would go um, the boy would go to his um, father's house. So during, during that journey, there would be a woman who would always try seducing him. Unfortunately, um, he fell into that trap. So while he was entering that woman's house, um, as he, he was following her, um, it, um, th this, um, this um, Arabic phrase was mentioned. Fear um Fear Allah the most, for He is the most greatest and most merciful. This shows, um, he kept saying this, he kept, he kept, he kept on saying that, and then, um, and then he became unconscious after. So then when he came, became unconscious, the woman tried wake him up, waking him up, but unfortunately she couldn't. She, so she called a slave to drag him to his father's house. So when his father saw him, like this in this situation he 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 brought him up and um he 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 asked him oh oh son what happened what happened so the son told him the story of what happened to him and he also and he also men mentioned the um the phrase that he said fear allah the most for he is the most greatest and most merciful as his dad asked him what he what he mentioned so he kept saying this and he said it again and again and then at one point he he came he became unconscious again and then he passed away. Subhanallah. So what do we learn from this story? We learn that we should always um, say say the words regarding fear. So if you say this, Allah will most likely protect us from anything. Um, he'll protect us out from harm. Yeah, excellent. So being conscious of Allah, being conscious of Allah that He's watching you, He hears you, He sees you. Yeah, it should make us fear Him and that should make us stay away from bad things because if there's someone you know that you're scared of then you wouldn't want to do anything wrong and bad in front of him so it's very important we develop this quality so that you know we stay away from bad things and Allah becomes happy with us and Allah is not uh, angry with us Hamza can you tell 
How can you tell if someone is fearful of Allah? Um, if someone is fearful of Allah, um, one way you can tell is if the if one's salah becomes fruitful, meaning more time and effort is put into the salah instead of rushing it. Um, also, and someone can feel like reciting Quran, so the fear of Allah has been put into the hearts. Yeah. And instead of um, inst no matter how busy they are, no no matter where they are, they feel like reciting Quran before they even asked or told to. Also. Um, if one will think twice about um, wasting time, as time is, of, the, the time is for all of us limited, yep. and if one is fearful of Allah, they'll re they'll realize that time's um, short, and we should devote our time towards Allah and Allah alone. And also, one will be, one will think twice about um, skipping school, as school is. As if one has fear of Allah, school they will realize that school is a um, school is good as education is important for our mindset and health, and um, one will be able to control his eyes and anger. So if one is fearful of Allah, he's scared of being angry as he knows that Allah is watching him, and he will be also be scared of with his eyes looking at anything inappropriate as he knows that Allah is watching him, and if he's fearful of Allah, he'll be doing those things. That's a very good point. MashaAllah, you mentioned that, you know, the fear of Allah, uh, the effect of that and the good, thing that it, good things that it leads to. It, it makes your behavior very good. It makes your actions perfect. And so, you know, this quality that uh, we are talking about, the fear of Allah, it will have a very huge impact in, in our lives. So we should try and uh, develop that quality uh, by being mindful of Allah and learning about, uh, you know, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, dealt with those people who did not uh, listen to him. Uh, Nibras, can you uh, tell me, how can you tell if someone is fearful of Allah or not? If, someone's, if someone is actually fearful, they would want to be better. They would um, think, they will think twice about their actions and they would... Um, they they would want to do do better in life and like in in Islam as well. So they would pray more. They would read the Quran more, the and the Hadith, etc. Very good. So uh, basically, uh, you know, our actions need to show that we fear Allah. It's not enough to say I fear Allah. We have to show that uh, by following Him. Our fear of Allah should lead us to following Him. Hamza, can you uh, mention to us some of the things that will help us uh, develop the fear of Allah? Um, well, developing fear of Allah, um, you can think about death, when you're going to die, how you're going to die, only Allah knows when you're going to die, only Allah can control what you're going to die, that can help develop fear. You can um, develop fear by talking about the Day of Judgment, um, your actions will be um, um, recorded, like well, written down and uh, accounted for, you'll be asked what you did and what you didn't do, um, you'll be interrogated. Um, you can think about your actions. Um, what could have done? What good or bad have you done? Have you done more good than bad? Have you done more bad than good? What can you do to help yourself now? Um, you can think about your current situation. Do you have family in need? Have you helped anyone recently? Have you done any charity? You can think about. Um, um, you can think about your ethics. Um, have you prayed? Have you fasted? Um, have you give your zakah, your sadaqah, um, you can think of all those things. Excellent. Which will, inshallah, I hope you um, develop your fear of Allah. Excellent. So we've talked about the fear of Allah and that's a quality we should have. But some people, they may uh, become uh, pessimistic and think that they are hopeless and they don't have any hope. Nibras, uh, should a person only uh, have that quality, fear of Allah, or should he also be hopeful in Allah? Yeah, they should also have love for Allah as well, as Allah is most merciful, and He would, and He will forgive you if you do anything bad and you ask for repentance. Yeah. So we know that we should fear Allah, but we shouldn't uh, get to a level where we think that we do not have any hope. We should worship Allah w with love, with fear, and with hope. So we've learned quite a lot so far. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to develop this quality of love. 
And we learned how we can do that by studying his book, by listening uh, to the messages that Allah has given us, by studying the hadith, by staying away from haram. And one of the words used in the Quran that means uh, fear of Allah or piety is taqwa. And I'm sure we've heard of the word taqwa many times in the, in the uh, Quran. Uh, so taqwa is the fear of Allah. And Hamza, can you uh, mention to us uh, the fear of Allah, taqwa, uh, does Allah love this quality? Did he mention this in the Quran? Um, well, Allah says in the Quran, all you who believe, fear Allah, uh, fear Allah and be truthful. Yep. Meaning that everyone who's Muslim, everyone who believes um, should be um, should be should be fearing Allah with all their heart. Also, everyone who believes shouldn't lie. They should speak the truth and always be truthful. Yep. This is how we know that Allah loves this quality yep. and wants all this quality to be in all of us. Yep. Nibras, some people, when you tell them to fear Allah, uh, they say, worry about yourself. Uh, why is that wrong? But the reason why it's wrong is because if you have fear in Allah, that, that's just it. So when you have fear in Allah, in Allah, Allah would guide you and protect you. So it's more stronger to fear, have fear in Allah rather than yourself. Yeah. So as Muslims, we're not only ordered to uh, help ourselves and try and become uh, better f uh, in ourselves. We are ordered to invite other people towards good. So although we are not nosy, we try and encourage others to do good. If we are upon good, then we want others to be upon good as well because we love for our brother what we love for ourselves. So if you ask someone to fear Allah, we shouldn't think uh, that, uh, you know, we don't need that advice. Because even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he asked, he ordered the Prophet sallallahu to fear Allah. So we uh, are more deserving of uh, we need that order more, that we should fear Allah at all times. Uh, Hamza, uh, where should we fear Allah? Uh, only in the masjid or everywhere? And is there any hadith that you know that mentions about fearing Allah everywhere? Um, in my opinion, I believe that it shouldn't just only be in a mosque, yep. it should be everywhere because um, fearing Allah is part of our iman yep. and we should always fear Allah because um, we might never know one day will be gone and the only person that will be with us is Allah yep. and that's why we should always be fearing Allah. Um, yep. Yeah. So fearing Allah, uh, Allah wants us to fear Him everywhere, not just the masjid, in our homes, when we are on our own, in, uh, in different environments, in all environments. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, haythu ma kunt. Fear Allah wherever you are. So. We shouldn't uh, think that uh, because we're, we may not be in the best of environments that we cannot uh, practice our uh, religion. We should try and fear Allah as much as we can. Because Allah doesn't burden us more than we can handle. So we should try our best to uh, do as much as we can. And Allah will not punish us uh, if we cannot do something that we do not have the capability uh, to do so. Um, Nibras, the people of the past, they feared Allah and they uh, worshipped Allah and they showed their fear, uh, they cried and uh, they mentioned uh, about Allah in their books. Uh, in our time, in our daily life, what kind of things will show that we fear Allah? Um, the type of things that show that we're fe we fear in Allah Mm. If we worship him, uh, if we stay away from haram, if we if we read the Quran and yep. if we if we listen to a lot of Mus uh, Muslim talks about, yep. for example, Mufti Mek, he he teaches us a lot about Islam as well. If we listen to his speeches and yep. and so on, and also if we read the hadiths as well, because there's many hadiths illustrated by Imam Nawawi. Um, giving us examples of how we can be better and how, what, should, what we should do and what, how's the way for Islam. Yes, good. So one way we can develop the fear of Allah is if we're around people that are reminding us about Allah. 
one of the ways we become heedless is if we're away from the gatherings of knowledge and we do not uh, come close to the scholars. Because the scholars, their main job is to remind us of our duties to Allah. And so if we do not uh, have that connection with the scholars and also with the message of Allah, then uh, we will not know what to do and uh, we will be lost. And so one way that we develop the quality of fearing Allah is that we always try and stay close to the message of Islam and the people who spread the message of Islam. Hamza, the word khawf is the word for fearing Allah. Uh, so on the day of judgment, will people have fear of Allah? And uh, will there be any people who uh, are safe and they don't have anything to fear? Um, well, we know on the day of judgment, no one is safe because Allah has mentioned that if a sesame seed was hidden in a rock in Jannah, it will be brought out. So that goes to show that no one is safe, everyone will be brought out, we will all be questioned. However, there is something to fear because obviously it's a day of panic, it's a day of chaos. Yeah. We, everything we know of, everything today will be gone. Yeah. Mountains will be reduced to stones, rubble. So there's obviously something to fear of. However, yeah, I believe there's something to fear of because obviously we're going to fear Allah now and then because we have nothing else to fear of. We only think of Allah then and, and we know that Allah the day of judgment, after the Day of Judgment in Jannah, there won't be anything to fear of. No, because yeah. Jannah is a place of happiness. Of That's happiness and peace. So, dear respective viewers, we learn that uh, the quality of fearing Allah is the quality that Allah wants us to have to worship Him with love, hope and fear and there will come a time in the hereafter in Jannah inshallah where we will be at peace, at ease and there is nothing to fear about. So we are coming to the close of our program. Let's summarize what we've learnt from this program. Hamza, can you mention to us the importance of the topic and what we've benefited? From um, this topic. The importance of fearing Allah is to remember Allah, remember what Allah can do. Don't forget that um, you, you only live physically once. Death will come, chaos will come, um, you will be questioned. Um, think twice about your actions, think twice about missing school, um, wasting time, um, use your time wisely and um, um, think, um, think about Allah before you do anything. Very good. And Nibras, what? Can you tell us uh, about this topic, summarizing it? So we should always fear Allah, meaning um, when we fear Allah, we should always do what's best and we should use our time wisely to do, to do well, to, um, to, to do what's best, like for example, reading Quran and um, we should always have fear in Allah. So say um, there's something wrong, like for example, say if there's a 50 pound on the floor, we wouldn't pick it up and um, have it for ourselves. We would instead we would give it to charity. Yeah, we would give it to charity as if if we're if we're taking that fifty pound for ourselves, we're stealing it. So, so having fear of Allah makes us more more wiser and more pious. Yeah, very good, very good point. And we'll end on this point: the point that having that quality of fear of Allah will help us stay away from bad things and want to do good things and it will make Allah happy with us and ultimately those who believe in Allah and fear Him and please Him, they're the ones that will go to a place, Jannah, a place where there's no fear or no harm and nothing to worry about. I hope you benefited from this program. I thank both brothers, brother Hamza and brother Nibras for attending and benefiting us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to act upon what we have heard until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.